what we're looking at here is an ISO 594-1 figure 5 reference fitting. And what we're looking at in this hand is an ISO 594-2 female fitting. When we're reading the standard and we're going to use a reference fitting, the standard puts some interesting requirements on us. It says that we have to assemble the fitting with not more than 27.5 newtons of force or pressure while at the same time applying not more than 0.1 newton meter of torque and we cannot rotate it more than 90 degrees. Basically what this is doing is it's saying that a relatively light amount of force and a relatively light amount of torque have to be applied at the same time. And if we overdo the pressure or overdo the torque, we're going to invalidate our test. We wonder why this is. The answer is quite simple and I will use an analogy. The people who wrote the standard did not know who was going to be putting this gauge together. Or actually we're talking about the needle and the syringe together. They didn't know who was going to be working this. And it could have been Betty Boop, ew, I'm putting it together. Or it could have been Brutus, <laughs> it's together. Now, when you're dealing with the lure fitting, the more force and torque you get on it, the more likely it is not going to leak. And the less force and torque you put on it, the more likely it's going to leak. So, when they designed the standard for the reference fitting, they designed it with Betty Boop in mind, figuring that it'd just be put on with a little light pressure and a little light torque. And so we want to test it with that level. So the standard says not more than 27.5 force, not more than one newton meter torque, both applied at the same time, and in this case not more than a 90 degree rotation. If you put more pressure on, or you put more torque on, or you don't do them at the same time, or you exceed 90 degrees, you're going to invalidate your test. And how do you know what 27.5 newtons of force is? How do you know what 0.1 newton meter of torque is? That's where um, I'm recommending that you take a look at the website and find the ISO 594 lure test assembly machine. The machine is motorized, so what will happen is you will put the fitting on the machine, you will put the lure, you put the test fitting on the machine, you put the lure fitting on the machine, they will be lined up together, and then a push of the button, and it will rotate, and it will pressure, and it will torque, all at the same time, as the standard requires, and when it gets to its maximum, or just before the maximum, it will stop. And it'll be, it'll be stopped right there, and you'll have the perfect setting every time. So your test will be valid. If you have people that are uh, looking over your shoulder saying, are you doing your test right? You can say, well, I put it together with the lure test assembly machine, and uh, it's all validated and certified, and so I know that my test is valid. If, they, if you didn't use the machine, they say, well, how do you know you didn't put 27, 20, 28 newtons of force on it? Well, what is 28 newtons of force anyway? You know, how, how hard do you push? So it's kind of hard to validate your test if you don't have something like the lure test assembly machine. So take a look at the website. You'll find the machine, and you'll find that it will help your validation of your testing. And with that machine in hand, your customers will be much more happy with your test results.